Welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Pokemon, the podcast where we talk anything and everything Pokemon. But unfortunately, there's not much Pokemon to talk about. But maybe that in itself is a lot to talk about. More on that later. How? How you doing? Hi. Hello. Uh, It's been like almost an entire week. Hopefully things have been good. Hopefully you've been catching your Easter Pokemon like your bunny bees and your banaries. I hope you had a good Easter. Hopefully you had some time to spend with family, had a nice dinner. Uh, It was a good relaxing week, I think, overall for most people. I think it was very much needed. Uh, And uh, I know it's kind of like... You know, it shouldn't be an excuse to see family, you should always be able to see family. But I think it was just a nice little reminder to be like, yeah, you know what, let's get together and, and you know, enjoy time together in a social environment. I think people really need that, which, by the way, I am proud to say that I got my first dose of the vaccination. Uh, now, I, I will say this. This is just personally my opinion. I have nothing against people that, you know, get vaccinated or not vaccinated because I was actually a, I wasn't necessarily against getting a vaccination. I was just like not caring for it, even though I I get that it's it's something that we should do. It's like the flu shot, right? Every year you should get the flu shot to help prevent from getting the flu. Although every time I get the flu shot, I always end up getting the worst of the symptoms like yeah i get it i'm I'm gonna feel a little drowsy and stuff like that but i it it i don't know it just comes to me tenfold so you know i was just kind of hesitant to get the the covid vaccine but i went ahead and did it and you know after getting it i i felt very good about myself i felt you know i felt like it was the right thing to do and so i'm glad i went through that decision and just kind of you know waited in the line and, and got the vaccination it was actually quicker than i thought i think in total I waited about an hour, almost an hour and a half, which I know it sounds terrible, but when you see a long line of cars uh, waiting for, to get the vaccine and it just actually just keeps moving, it doesn't feel that bad. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm, I'm happy that I, I got the uh, first dose and then I have to go back in a couple weeks for uh, for the second dose. So uh, I, I think this is the right direction to go, especially if we want to have in-store events for Pokemon TCG. Uh, I know there's a lot of rumors, a lot of talks about how, you know, events, not necessarily Pokemon TCG in, in its own, but just like any events, you know, may kind of require uh, people to show like their vaccine card or whatever. And I get that there's part of that that goes against the, the HIPAA law, I think, or something like that. I don't, I don't know the whole logistics behind that conversation or, or the rumors or whatnot. But, um, you know, if that is the route that has to be taken to do in-store social events, you know, I, I think that's some just that's just something people should consider and not just completely reject. Uh, I'm glad that I got my vaccine, like I said, and uh, yeah, uh, you know, more power to you uh, for those of you that decide to go uh, with that decision. And for those that don't, that's completely fine. Just remember, please, for everyone, uh, just keep following, you know, social distance guidelines and, and, you know, keep wearing that mask. So with that being said, though, uh, not like I said, not much in Pokemon news hardly any uh i mean i think we can kind of blow through this pretty quick because it's really weird that even for the video game stuff there's not a lot of going on so let me get through all the the news stuff first and then i'll talk about what i kind of was implying earlier at my intro of my of, of this episode First of all, uh, we did have the spring event, like I mentioned earlier. Uh, we had the Baneries, the Bunnelbees. Uh, Bunnelbee was shiny for the first time in Pokemon Go. Um, there were raids for Azumarill. And uh, actually, I only, I only remember Azumarill. That's because it was one of the collection uh, challenges, like one of the Pokemon to get for that challenge, which took me a while because I did not see Azumarill in raids for like five days four or five days, however long like this event was, I nearly, I literally got it the last day that this spring event uh, was uh, was going on for. So uh, if you got your shiny Bunnaby, congratulations. I got one. Uh, I was pretty happy about it. Although I'm going to say shiny Bunnaby, not my favorite shiny. I think maybe I have to take a look at it again, but something about the gray and, and just a darker color tone just kind of scares me a little bit with this bunny. Like it doesn't come off as like a, as a friendly, you know, playful little thing. It's just, 
it's a it's a creepy bunny i don't I'm, again i gotta take a look at it and, and be sure uh as far as the flower crown pokemon uh, i think chancy and happiny uh were able were available as uh flower crown pokemon i got two chancy which one i'll evolve eventually into a blissey did not hatch any happening with flower crown so unfortunately i missed out on that but just as always they're gonna bring it back anyway uh so that was it it was like only four days from april 4th to april 8th uh so that's gone and over with uh and in pokemon tcg news well there's only the announcement of like uh summer themed uh tcg products so if you go on Poke Beach, they have the product images there. Um, it's the it's it's labeled as the Seaside Pokemon TCG accessories. So they're Ultra Pro, which means uh, they're the play mats, the sleeves, the deck boxes, uh, the portfolios, and I think like one or two other things. But um, I like the beach landscape that they used. Uh, I think that it's a very nice landscape. I think it's very obviously appropriate for for the theme that they're going for for the summer uh, for the summer tone, the summer theme. But the Pokemon that they chose, nothing wrong with the Pokemon they chose. Makes sense. Gyarados, Lapras, Magikarp. Maybe less Gyarados, more Lapras for sure. Uh, the only issue I really have, and it's, I guess it's minor, um, they're like stock images from like, you know, like if you look into a strategy guide and, you know, there's that, it's like they took a Pokemon picture right out of the strategy guide and just pasted it on there. There's no like neat little action pose, you know, no Gyarados, like, you know, diving or jumping out of the water or lapras shooting water out it's just boom there's those pokemon from what you would see in a pokedex slapped onto the product so it's kind of like a little disappointing because i think it would have came off nicer if you had them in action if you had them doing certain things rather than you know it, it's like one of those um what is it it's uh like you have that the sticker play mat thing and you have like the reusable stickers and you just put the stickers on them and then you can move them around they look just like that so i otherwise if you like if you check them out you like them I'm, I'm, go for it man i mean like they're they are nice in general looking products because again of that beach landscape uh definitely fits well for the summer i wonder if anyone does that because this is not the only time they've done a a season themed uh you know accessory set uh and i wonder if anyone's like changes do you guys change out your deck boxes and sleeves and stuff like that like like you have a purpose for changing them out or do you just use the same ones for a while until they kind of start getting worn out and then you just switch to a new one whatever is available at that time because i'm curious like i'm wondering if there is i'm sure there's those players uh that you know switch out their entire tcg accessory set based on the month or the the holiday or theme or whatever to it um i think that's kind of cool though I, I think that's really nice as far as the video game stuff um pokemon cafe is a thing i think there's another update but nothing really super released yet uh i think galarian slow poke event was over already at this point nothing from pokemon unite still uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield, the, uh, the Easter Pokemon stuff was over. Um, I think that was, a, that's Easter night. And now the raids have turned to, uh, Ditto, Centiscorch, and other Pokemon, which apparently there's no, like, set theme for this one. Like, it doesn't seem like there's some sort of consistency here. Uh, and I, I guess for some people that was kind of confusing. But hey, I mean, if people want Ditto for breeding purposes, uh, you can get Ditto in raids. Although, you can get ditto from the isle of armor because there's literally an island of ditto in that in that dlc package and that's it for sword and shield um as far as pokemon masters well uh we did get a couple of new things there was a new story chapter that was added uh which continues the story of the takedown of team break uh and you're able to use the sync pair of lair and hoopa i've not got a chance to, to play that yet uh the champion stadium has been updated with Unova Elite Four and the Champion, uh, which this week for me was Alder. I'm not sure if that's the same for everybody because it is going to switch between Alder and Iris. Um, but this week, as I'm pretty sure it's Alder. And uh, to, to be honest, they're easy. Like th this Elite Four seems much easier than the Johto or the Kanto Elite Four. So I don't know if that was intentional, if like they're trying something out. Or if I just happen to have stronger sync pairs now, which I don't think I do because I haven't really 
upgraded a lot of my sync pairs i'm i'm like the the most things i can do right now is like i have to be able to upgrade them to to five star or uh the the five five six star ex but i don't have enough of those resources to do that so you know it's not like anything has really changed since then so i'm kind of curious why unova felt easier for me if it felt easier for you guys let me know because i i'm just I, is it a general thing that they just intentionally made it easier for everyone uh also with that change we also got spotlight scouts for leaf and gladion they're in they're in one banner with uh their their chances of getting them boosted and leaf uh with it's leaf and eevee they now have a six star ex and morty and jasmine and glacia are also in uh a banner on their own to get a, an increased chance of getting any one of those five stars so you know new sync pairs uh to to get and i think that's pretty much it when it comes to uh pokemon masters um Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, there's one more thing. One more thing. Uh, we also got the return of the Dragon That Rules the Sky legendary event. This is the one that features Zinnia and her quest for Rayquaza. And then you get the chance of getting sync pair of Zinnia and Rayquaza uh, with the full sync grid available once you have, obviously, the three. Uh, yeah, it's like you have to get three of them to upgrade her to three out of five. And Oh, and also with that... We also get a, another banner with May and Mudkip and Brendan and Trico. And then I think if you uh, scout for those, like the 11 pools or whatever, then you get like specific custom, um, what do they call the five star custom power ups or whatever. So, yeah, that's that's it. Really, a, re, a repeat event, a lot of banners for uh returning characters and really the only two new things is the anova elite four and the story chapter not much this is going on i don't even believe that there was anything new announced coming that's kind of getting excited for i thought we were supposed to have gotten dynamax pokemon by the end of march but maybe i read that wrong or I remember that i'm remembering that incorrectly and it's supposed to be in e april so we'll see hopefully we'll get an update sooner rather than later but I guess the 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 biggest news video for video game wise is is Pokemon Go. Although we we kind of already knew about this stuff beforehand, we're just getting some more details on it now. So for instance, uh, well, we'll start with this one. So in Pokemon Go, the special research community day ticket is available. This is for that Snivy community day. It costs a dollar. Uh, don't forget it. I mean. I think it's just it's worth it why not it's just one dollar it gives you a couple extra rewards uh an encounter with snivy and stuff like that so yeah i might as well go for it and just don't forget that the community day is this sunday for those of you that want the snivy starter pokemon and the increased chance of getting the shiny and then uh also there was that test last month about the pokemon eggs now apparently all players of pokemon go will now have the ability to see which pokemon can be hatched from eggs and uh and you'll be able to see the rarity behind them um so we kind of talked a little bit about that before where like one egg means it's it's an easy pokemon or it's like a a higher chance of getting any one of those pokemon and there's two three i think up to five so uh you know if you want to check your chances go for it but the biggest thing from pokemon go would be this new rivals week event which we did you know they briefly mentioned in their april update blog uh, but now we get the further details about it. And from what it says here from Cerebi, uh, this event is the Rivals Week event and features an increase in spawns Pokemon that have a rivalry with others, adding Skrelp and Clauncher into the game. It runs from April 13th to April 18th. This event features increased spawns of Skrelp, Clauncher, Hitmonchan, Hitmonlee, Makuhita, Metatite, Zangoose, Seviper, and more. Machop, Tyrogue, Elekid, Magby, Makuhita, Metatite, Zangoose, and Seviper will be in 5k eggs. Scrope, Clauncher, Nidokeen, Nidoqueen, Seviper, Zangoose, and more will be in raids, with Landorus Therian Form joining them. There will be an event exclusive field research featuring Clauncher and Scrope. Team Go Rocket will appear more in Pokestops and Balloons during the event, and there will be a global challenge arena. All trainers can win raids to unlock two times catch Stardust. That's it. Um, so really the big takeaway here is that you get Skrelp uh, and Clauncher. Skrelp will evolve into Dragalge 
and then Clauncher will evolve into Clauncher. Uh Hopefully, it's just candy. Uh, it's just candy hit to collect for them. I don't think there's anything special about them. It's not like a Carablast shell mitt situation. Um, it's just simply just evolve them up and that's it. I'm excited about Clauncher. I, I do like Clauncher as a Pokemon, so I'm, I'm happy to add that. Scrope has kind of slowly started to grow on me because uh, Dragalge is a pretty neat Pokemon. And I think it wasn't until the Pokemon TCG card, I forget which set it was, but it just had a really nice art and Dragalge was the Pokemon for it. And it just looked very, very good, and, and it just made me kind of look Dragalge in a different, uh, in a different lighting, a different way. So, uh, I'm I'm happy with these Pokemon. Uh, I th I know Scrope is poison. I don't know, does he count as water? Or is he just strictly poison? Clawitzer is definitely water. But let me look up Scrope really quick, because if he's water, then this is, makes it better. Uh, yeah, it is water poison. So hey. This makes me even happier because now it is completely all water Pokemon that are added to the game or newly added to the game. So, hey, I'm not going to complain about that. Water Pokemon are the best. And that's it for the video game stuff. Seriously, like that that's it. That's all we got. I mean, I was able to wrap this up in like 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes, maybe. So I'm curious if there's gonna be anything else happening this month i wonder if april is gonna be like the quiet month hmm maybe now as far as pokemon center because we can't uh you can't pass an episode without talking about pokemon center and what's new in that shop which is still not much uh since the last time we talked they added new pixel pins so if you're on the adventure of collecting all 151 of those they added chancy Voltorb and Electrode is a two-pack, a two-pack of Ekans and Arbuck, a two-pack Spearow and Pharaoh, and a three-pack Pidgey, Pidgeotto, and Pidgeot, which I am extremely tempted to get the Pidgey, but I know I'm going to go down this rabbit hole where if I buy that Pidgey and I'm going to look at my Squirtle pins and my Pidgey pins, I'm going to be like, oh, I got to get the rest of them. Like, I know that's what's going to happen, and I don't... Uh, I feel like I'm just going to do the math later and see how much that's actually going to cost me. I shouldn't. I ho Hopefully I don't. But, you know, just be mindful of that. If you get these pins, there's that risk of wanting to collect them all. So you you've been warned. Also in the Pokemon Center, they had released the Alola partner, uh, the first partner pack of the Alola Pokemon, Poplio, Litten, and Rowlet. Although... They quickly went out of stock, of course, because, um, again, the scalper situation is still a thing. Uh, I think you were limited three. Yes, you're limited three. Uh, so hopefully you got them. They come with a Battle Styles booster pack and a Sun and Moon base set uh, booster pack. Sun and Moon or, or Sword and Shield? No, uh, Sun and Moon. Sorry. Yeah, it's there's a picture of it right here. So it's a Sun and Moon base set pack, which is, is fine. Uh I, I hopefully they restock these. I don't think they restocked the Galar ones, but I think they should. They've been restocking battle styles. So why not the partner packs? Because people kind of want them for their collection. I mean, it's ridiculous that there are some stores out there that are charging 30 bucks for them. So please, Pokemon, get them, get them out and going. Which, speaking of battle styles, really weird. Um, well, not so much weird, but they've been restocking battle styles. So every once in a while, you know, they'll have them up, they're for sale for, you know, maybe up for an, a few hours, and then they'll be out of stock, and then become unavailable. But then they'll come back as available, and be, uh, you can, again, purchase more. Uh, they have the limit of 72, which is two booster boxes worth. But then, again, they'll be sold out, and then they'll become unavailable. But then, they'll come back again. It was like two or three times they've done this. So, that's good. I hope this is kind of, you know, I, I wish there was some consistency to it, because, you know, you never know if you're going to run out. But, uh, I, I don't know what their plan is. I wonder if this is like per waves, per printing that they're doing. But also they've released the three pack blisters, but not in the new releases. It's like before, it's like right before like the, the play mats, the T Pokemon 25th anniversary play mats. So there's the Eevee one and the Jolteon one. Now the Eevee one sold out first and then eventually the Jolteon one sold, one, Jolteon sold out uh, several hours later after that. But it was just like, I think they lasted longer just because people didn't realize that they were up and they're not marked as new too. So they're, they were just there. And that makes me nervous because I've been kind of keeping an eye out for the Blastoise VMAX battle pack. 
and I haven't seen it yet up on Pokemon Center, but if they're able to just throw it in, like, as an older listing, nah, it makes me nervous, because I don't know if I'll be able to see the Blastoise one, uh, you know, right away. So, kind of keeping my eye on it, because I really want the Blastoise. I have yet to get one, and I just want two copies of it. I want one sealed and one to open up. Also, in addition to all the stuff they've been adding, the new sets of Pokemon uh, Pikachu plushes are out for pre-order. The Alola region Pikachu. Now, these are expected to ship mid-June, uh, and they are still available for pre-order at the time of recording. This is a Friday afternoon, and uh, pre-ordered for $24.99. Comes with two of them. You got, obviously, both versions of uh, the Alola Pikachu, which I really like the one with the backpack. I think that's the coolest one. Although, the overall design of the other one with the red hat and the white shirt was pretty cute, too. But if you got the... Um, if you got the Galar ones, you know you're going to have to get the Alola ones because it's going to be a whole thing. Next month, we're going to get, what is it, uh, Kalos? We're going to get Kalos, so just be prepared for it because that's, that's coming. You know it. Also, last thing that was just, just recently added, like not too long ago, is a new figurine collection exclusive to the Pokemon Center known as Pikachu Moods. Now, this one is labeled as Sleepy Figure. Because there are actually one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight figures in total to this whole thing. Now, the sleepy one is the, the first one they're starting off with. And who knows what the next one's going to be. But obviously, they're going to go through all the moods. It's going to be happy, uh, crying, uh, sad, all these different uh, different types of expressions. And they, they do show the silhouette to them. Now, it is $14.99. And unfortunately... <laughs> Now that I'm recording this, because I'm double checking it, it is out of stock. And it so it didn't last too long. There, there is a purchase limit of two of them. So I don't know how many they had to initially begin with. But um, hopefully, I don't know if this is something they're going to give to GameStops. Because I don't think this is a, this is not a Funko thing. This is legitimately a, a Pokemon Center original. So uh, hopefully the aftermarket prices aren't too bad if you're trying to get this one. Um, but definitely, it's it's a cute looking one. It's Pikachu. He's all sleepy. He's got a blanket over him, and he's holding like a peak uh, a a Jigglypuff plush, and it's adorable. So uh, yeah, check that out. Look at the picture of it. Um, hopefully, you can find one at a reasonable price. Obviously, no one's gonna sell it for fourteen ninety nine anymore. I would say don't spend more than twenty five on this, like base twenty five maybe, and then five dollars for shipping. But that that really is what it should just come down to. Because uh, if anyone's trying to do this more than 30, 40, that's ri a little ridiculous. My opinion. My opinion. Just saying. But let's move on to what I really want to talk about. Is the fact that we've gotten very little Pokemon news. And not necessarily just in this past week. But just think about it overall. Just this is the Pokemon 25th anniversary year. This is a huge deal, right? I mean, like the 25, the 25th year of any company seems to be like a milestone it's a quarter of a century and they kind of he like the pokemon company started off with the macy's thanksgiving day parade right they had the, the poster with the logo on there they had the dancing pikachu they had you know their part in in the thanksgiving day parade and it kind of was like the kickoff to like oh hey by the way pokemon is celebrating this this one year very similar kind of to how they started off with the pokemon 20th anniversary but there hasn't really been much for about uh like what a, i guess a month but in is, is that am i just rushing this am i thinking that you know hey just because it's only been a month doesn't mean anything like true i mean it probably doesn't mean anything at all it's just weird to me that if it's the 25th anniversary year that it should kind of be shoved in our faces more than it is right now so if we if we, if we exclude pokemon center right just just don't even think about Pokemon Center and into this equation. What else is there that's out right now that is going to remind us about the 25th anniversary? We did have the Pokemon Direct, which did have the, you know, intro of all the things that's happened in the past several, well, of course, in the past 25 years of Pokemon. But then we got the Post Malone concert, which was fine. That was in, that was Pokemon Day, right? That was the, the 27th, I believe. But that's been it. There hasn't been monthly products to go to the store and find this. Well, okay, 
I'll take that back. There has been maybe one product that we could find in the store every month and, and kind of be reminded about the 25th anniversary, but that's the first partner pack. Um, but unfortunately, because of the scalper situation, it's not existent. So we don't have that to remind us. But there's no figurines. There's no, like, there, there's not enough, I feel like. So let me backtrack by kind of... Uh, stating something that I heard from another podcast. Uh, if, if I haven't said it, mentioned it before yet, I do listen to the, the po- podcast. It's super effective. Kind of uh, the, the podcast uh, to go to for Pokemon news and stuff. But, you know, the host there had mentioned that it, it feels like there was much more done for the 20th anniversary than there has been done for the 25th anniversary. And I kind of agree with that. For the 20th anniversary, every month, right, it was a mythical Pokemon. We had the mythical Pokemon plushes. Every single month, there was a new mythical Pokemon to go for. Along with that, there was a figurine of that mythical Pokemon plush. There was also a, uh, a collector's box where for like twelve ninety nine you get it was it was the set, gen, generation set and you can get those two booster packs with the pin with the promo card and and you know that had the twentieth anniversary logo on it. Then we had the twentieth anniversary elite trainer box, but then every, that was you know that was something we got every month that reminded us, hey, this is kind of a cool big deal. It's the twenty. It's been twenty years of Pokemon, so that this is awesome. Like you kind of got into the hype of it all, but for this. We're not getting enough in stores to remind us. Because you got to think, right? Again, I said leave Pokemon Center out of the equation because not a lot of people are aware of Pokemon Center. And, and maybe, yeah, I, I've, I made this argument before. Now people are more aware of it. But I think because a lot of things keep going out of stock, maybe people are discouraged so they don't go on the Pokemon Center website as much. And so if we, if we have to resort to going online uh, to, to look for this stuff, to remind us it's a 25th anniversary year. I don't know. I, I feel like that's not necessarily bad marketing, but just it's, it's a missed opportunity. Like there should be something in store to remind us that this is the big year for Pokemon. But then again, is, is the Pokemon company going, going to make a big deal about this? Like they don't necessarily have to, right? Because now, now we get into an argument of like expectations versus reality. And you know, we've expected this year was coming up. We expected that there was going to be big things for Pokemon. Like it, it's it's a, again a big milestone. We all kind of figured, hey, the twenty five years of Pokemon. We expect big grand things to happen. That's cool that they're doing this concert. They have their own website. They're they're celebrating the regions every month. But in reality. Do they really have to do anything else beyond what they're doing to shove in our faces that it's the 25th anniversary, right? Pokemon is going to sell no matter what. People are going to continue to buy Pokemon product. And I'm not even talking about the cards, but just anything Pokemon related, whether it's the action figures or the plushes or, you know, pop sockets or or video games. Like, we're going to continue to buy Pokemon stuff because we just love that franchise. I think we just have it in ourselves where we feel like, you know, we deserve to have this celebration because we've supported Pokemon company for so long. And I think rightfully so, that the company should kind of reward us and, and, you know, be thankful and be like, hey, you know, thank you for all these years of doing this and this. We're going to, you know, celebrate by, you know, selling you guys this stuff and, and making these shirts and so on and so forth. It's just been kind of very low key, though. Like, I don't know how anyone else feels about this. And maybe I'm alone in this thinking. Like, it's not. And, and it's like, sounds like I'm like downplaying Pokemon Company. I'm, I'm really not trying to. I just kind of, I don't know. I wish there was more to it because I want more people to understand that this is a big deal for Pokemon. You know, it's 25 years in total, 25 years of, of a lot of people's lives i mean this this brought forth a whole generation of collectors whether it was toys or cards or video games and and it just seems odd to me that we're not getting headline after headline after headline and maybe they're waiting for the right opportunity right maybe because of this whole scalper situation they don't want to keep pushing pokemon stuff in the way because you know people are, are, are starving for pokemon cards and maybe you're spending too much money on those because of scalper prices you know people are, are you know upset about the the fact that they can't get cards and and maybe pokemon company thinks that hey if we put out something like this now oh, people aren't gonna exactly be too happy to go for it because they're upset already about the card stuff so maybe they're waiting for later in the year once covid stuff kind of you know calms down and and they can kind of ramp up production even more so and and then they can start doing 
the Pokemon 25th anniversary stuff. Like, there's still that 25th anniversary set, or I don't know if it's really confirmed or more rumored. You know, let's let's stick to the rumored side. You know, if we got a 25th anniversary set, I'm sorry, if we got a 20th anniversary set, then you know, it does does seem like we should get a 25th anniversary set. And and I think there was some hints towards, you know, leaning towards a, a 25th anniversary set with all these great Pokemon products that's going to release in the fall. But is, is, are people going to care about it that much once it hits? Because if this scalper situation doesn't, you know, get itself fixed by then, people are not going to go after the 25th anniversary set because it's just going to be, you know, a grueling battle to get cards and it's just not going to be worth it at that point. So I'm just very concerned as to why we are just not getting as much um, 25th anniversary stuff, like not even the music. The music was supposed to be a big deal. We were supposed to, you know, get these artists that come out with their songs and kind of celebrate music throughout the year. But we haven't heard anything since February 27th, other than, you know, Jay Balvin is part of it. And, you know, I, I would I had expected that maybe they would have released a song each month, but not even that. Then we don't even get like a little bit of tidbit, like a quick update. I was like, hey, the next time you can expect this is this day. So I just wish that there was more maybe transparency. You know, are are they going to do some big stuff for 25th anniversary or are they just going to say, hey, yeah, we got these products with 25th anniversary logo on it. That's that's it for now. Right. Because now we factor in Pokemon Center. There's a lot of 25th anniversary stuff, but like there's so much added on Pokemon Center that like the the stuff just kind of comes and goes, right? 25th anniversary stuff was up for like a week, two weeks until like more stuff got added on. And now it's pushed to like page three when you go into the new releases and people tend to forget. And some of that stuff is already out of stock, especially the clothes. Like you can't even get some of the glasses anymore. So it just seems very odd that it appears that maybe Pokemon is relying on Pokemon Center for all the 25th anniversary stuff. You know, the playmats, the, the TCG deck boxes, the sleeves and all that. And I I don't think that's enough. Uh, I, I think it's cool that we get the Pikachu plushes each month that represent a region because that's that was also part of their plan is for the 25th anniversary. We're going to celebrate each region starting with the Alola and backwards. But I mean, people can just see that as just another set of po- uh, Pikachu plushes that are themed this way. I mean, we've had Pikachu plushes wearing Pokemon costumes. So this is just another Pikachu uh, plush line that, you know, isn't that surprising. You know, if anything, we I'm surprised it didn't happen sooner. Maybe they were waiting for this moment. Uh, I just, I'm, I'm a little sad that there's just not enough Pokemon news. Like, I, it sounds like such a super negative thing and, and I feel you know, makes it sound like I'm, I fe- I'm feeling like I'm super entitled to this. And I'm, and, and yeah, you know what? That's fine. That's a, that's a fair judgment. You can call me out on that. Um, it's, re- I'm in me personally, I, I didn't see it that way, or at least I don't, I still don't see it that way. It's just, you know, I'm, I'm just so happy and excited for Pokemon that I really want them to like, just tell the whole world, like really blast it out into everyone's television and phones and everything and say, Hey, this is our 25th anniversary. We have been here for 25 years of your life and we want to celebrate this with you guys. And thank you so much for supporting us and all this stuff. Like I want more and more people to really get into Pokemon. So I'm hoping that there is some grand master plan that we just haven't seen uh, come into fruition yet. You know, maybe we just got to play, be a little bit more patient. COVID did impact a lot of things. And for all we know, maybe they've been planning the 25th anniversary stuff since the 20th anniversary. Uh, They just had to really slow down a lot of their plans because of the pandemic. And, you know, maybe they'll postpone some of that celebration into the next year. Who knows? I think it'd be fine if they, you know, continue it on to the end of next year, maybe just to kind of catch up if they had stuff to catch up. Right. So, you know, I, let me know what your guys' thoughts are because I'm I'm very curious. You guys, as Pokemon fans in the Pokemon community, like, do you feel like it's the 25th anniversary? Do you feel like you're getting enough stuff to remind you that it's 25th anniversary, or are you in the same boat as me where you're kind of almost forgetting that it's the 25th anniversary? That it, you know that every once in a while when you get product and you get Pokemon, it's just like another ordinary day, and then you have to stop and remind yourself, oh yeah, that's right, it's the 25th anniversary year. Uh, where, where's like the, the, you know, the, the anniversary per- merchandise, 
uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just a little confused, I guess, puzzled. And, and going back to my expectation versus reality, I, I just set a lot of high expectations for this year because it was the 25th anniversary. I thought it would be a big deal. And maybe it is, but maybe not everything has to be a huge celebration. Not everything has to be a huge turnout. I'm, I'm hoping still that there's something bigger and better planned down the line later in the half of the year. You know, we just got to wait it out. Um, but, uh, you know, I think I'm what I'm going to personally do is just kind of try to force myself to be okay. Like, hey, stop expecting so much. Just be happy you got these cool play mats, that you got these cool sleeves, that there's like the parade thing that they're doing every month or, you know, that there's these P- Pikachu figures. And I think once I've gathered everything, I'll be like, yeah. This is this is stuff because I've been spending a lot more on Pokemon product this year, I think, than I have in any other year, just because, again, I'm excited about the 25th anniversary and all the products they've been releasing on the Pokemon Center website. I mean, I even bought a Charizard statue, which I never thought I would in a million years I would buy anything Charizard that's like kind of a major product, but I did it anyway. So kudos to Pokemon for conning me into that. <laughs> but seriously, though, I, I'm happy with all the products. I am happy with Pokemon. Um, the TCG stuff, hopefully that situation does get better. Uh, but generally, it is still feeling like there is more Pokemon in our lives. And maybe that's just a subtle plan of theirs, right? Just to make you realize that Pokemon is still a big deal after 25 years. So I again, I'd like to hear what you guys think, what your thoughts are, where you stand with the 25th anniversary. Um, that was just some food for thought, something that I was just kind of thinking about the other day and and uh, just, just had a lot of wonderings about it. But thank you for letting me go on that little bit of discussion. But let's go ahead and move on to the last segment of the episode. So because there is that, not a lot of news there's just not, not a whole lot of time to fill in. So this is a shorter than usual episode. But without further ado, let's move in to our Pokedex trivia. The segment where I tell you a Pokedex entry from a mysterious Pokemon of this episode, and you have to determine what that Pokemon is. I'll give you a couple hints here and there, but I can't tell you where the Pokedex entry comes from. You'll just have to guess from that entry and the clues that I give you. So without further ado... Let's get in to the Pokedex trivia. With incredible acceleration, it reaches its top speed of 150 miles per hour after running just 10 steps. Very short and could actually be any, a lot of like number of Pokemon. With incredible acceleration, it reaches its top speed of 150 miles per hour after running just 10 steps. All right, think about your answer. I can tell you that the initial release of this Pokemon is a monotype. There's actually two versions of this Pokemon. The second version is a dual type. One of its types got its own uh, promotional box of TCG products. So it had its own promo card. And for the last clue that might just give it away is that the second version of this Pokemon was just recently introduced into the Pokemon world. All right, lock in your answers because I'm going to go ahead and reveal it. That's right. You get a shorter time frame this time. Without further ado, our mystery Pokemon of this episode is none other than number 78, Rapidash. That's right. Rapidash is our Pokemon of the episode and not a whole lot of trivia, but going back to the two versions because we do have Galarian Rapidash, which was just recently introduced and has its own promotional TCG product. So there is a promo, uh, you know, Galarian Rapidash card out there. Now, it is a, now originally it is a fire type Pokemon, Rapidash from the Kanto region. The uh, Galar region, Rapidash, is uh, fairy and psychic interesting typing i think the only other one that's very psychic that i can think of off the top of my head is ralts and that whole line right there and not a whole lot of trivia which is interesting there's like really only two things off trivia off of bulbapedia uh the first one in early english language promotional material for pokemon red and blue it was revealed that rapidash was to keep its romanized japanese name gallop okay i don't know what to do with that info but sure Rapidash is the favorite Pokemon of the Kanto Pokemon fan club chairman. When the player first speaks to him, he goes on about why Rapidash is his favorite Pokemon at length. 
Again, I don't know what to do that with that trivia info. Uh, I feel like Rapidash doesn't get enough credit. If anything, the I guess what Rapidash is mostly known for, and this goes along with Ponyta, is their shiny form. Right, they 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 have a very like cool bluish purple shiny that just looks awesome in Pokemon Go, um, and just has it, it's just like a nice alternate to it. If you're not liking the fire red to it, a lot of people tend to go for the shiny Galarian Rapidash. Also looks cool, although I feel like some in some pictures it's like too. This is I don't know what better word to say like too muscular like it's too chunky in the face and sometimes that kind of gets away from the slickness of it. I kind of wish it was a bit thinner, um, but I do like Galarian Rapidash. I think it's a really cool Pokemon. If I had to pick between the two, I'll probably go back to use to the regular uh, Rapidash. Although with the Ponytas, I'll go with Galarian Ponyta because I think that one's much cooler. But this is Rapidash's uh, spotlight. Uh, yeah, definitely the original Kanto Rapidash my personal opinion better of the two versions that we have um i do like using blaine and rapidash in pokemon masters uh they have you know they have sunny day and they have uh you know a, a way to defend themselves so you know it's, i like using that sync pair uh, sometimes on a team with if i need if i need to use a fire pokemon but definitely for the sunny day um that it gives us to power up the fire type moves all right there you go that was rapidash short episode i know as i already said uh, no, not much news. Hopefully next week there's more news to talk about. Um, if you guys ever want to also give me some, you know, headlines, some things to talk about, uh, you know, head, whether it be issues in the Pokemon community, if you just want to hear someone else's thoughts, like a second opinion, you know, feel free to, to reach out to me and let me know. And I'll be more than happy to talk to you about them uh, on, on, on an episode. Uh, you know, I I try not to like tailored to one side of the conversation you know if anything i'm more honest about what i feel about certain uh news headlines and stuff like that um i don't try to like always put po pokemon in a positive spotlight because i think a lot of people tend to forget that you know we do have to realize the reality of it right especially with this whole pokemon tcg you know fiasco going on yeah it's you know, we can keep saying, you know, let's be patient, let's be patient, let's be patient. But the reality is, you know, we want it right now. And and we can only be patient for so long. So, you know, it's stuff like that that I don't mind speaking openly and honestly about. I think the more people are honest about it, the better people feel. But again, if you want to let me, if you want me to talk about any of that stuff, reach out to me on any of my social media or even email me. If you want to reach me out to Twitter or Instagram, it's SpartanStrike07. Or you can email me at SpartanStrike07 at gmail.com. And you can also follow me on Twitch at SpartanStrike07. Uh, all of that info will be in the show notes as usual. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, thank you so much for uh, for your patience. Thank you so much for everything, uh, any and all support. I mean, your support is you just listening to this episode, and I can't thank you enough for that. So without further ado, I hope you have a great week, and I can't wait till next week so we can continue talking about anything and everything Pokemon. Pokemon.